As Jesus went into Capernaum, a centurion came up to him, begging him for help and saying, Wait, 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 wait. Don't, 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 go, don't bypass this. A centurion. It's a centurion. What's a centurion? That's soldier. a Roman soldier. You know, this was doing... With the, some rank. With some rank. This was, all of this activity we're reading about was during the times of the Roman Empire in the first century here. And even Roman century, centurions mm -hmm. had heard of Jesus. Just in case you're wondering, the Lord Jesus Christ was... <laughs> he was very, very popular back during his ministry because of all the healing he was doing. Let me let me tell you something. We get most of our information from the internet. Okay? Very few people that I'm aware of even like watch the news on a regular. They catch whatever, they catch snippets on it on on the on on Facebook or something. In those days. First century days, yeah. It was word of mouth. It was word of mouth. And just like today, people like to gossip. <laughs> they they did it then. Did you hear? Did you hear? Did about you that hear man, about Jesus. Jesus. The yeah. the man had a one leg was longer than the other leg, and this guy, I think his name was Jesus. Jesus he the carpenter. Yeah. Laid his hands on him. He touched him, and all of a sudden, the man got up. Or the guy who was at the gate, beautiful gate, and couldn't. His these dudes that were like followers of this Jesus, you know, came up there and grabbed the man and he just he walked. He, talking, telling. There was no pictures. But you know, a person that sits by the beautiful gate for twenty or thirty years, how many people gonna know who that is? Everybody. Because we all gotta go to the temple. We got feast days, we got holy days, we have babies, we had to make a personal sacrifice. We And he's there. Do you know his name? Maybe, maybe not, but you know who he is. You know you know the guy that's always at the gate, that's sitting there, he can't walk? Oh, yeah, 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 I know him, I know who he is. I know you're talking about. He is walking. So-and-so said they saw him there and, and, and these guys came up to him and said, you know, and he was like, you know, begging for money. And they said, well, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I'm going to give it to you. And he's like, well, what do y'all have? In the name. Uh, I got the name of, of Jesus. Jesus I got Christ. the authority of Christ. Oh, you see the authority there. See? Rise up and walk. Yeah. And so he did. And everybody that saw that was like, Oh, my, I got to tell somebody what I just saw. This is how, G, it wasn't newspapers. It wasn't television. It wasn't the internet. It was people telling what they saw. So, word of mouth. Okay. And so this thing got, how many people were healing in the days of Jesus? I'm going to say zero. People were going to the temple, people were doing this, and they were giving offerings, and they were paying their tithes, and they were doing all this stuff. But for the most part, people stayed sick. People stayed demon-possessed. People stayed broken. Jesus shows up. People start getting healed. People start getting restored physically. That got attention. Yeah. Got people's attention. That got people's attention. And remember. It got people's yeah. attention positively and, and negatively. Negatively, yeah. yeah. And that's why he had issues with the Sanhedrin. And the Pharisees and Sanhedrin. The Pharisees. And so on. Because he was doing stuff that they had heard he that they had heard about, but it was taking their authority away from them. Yeah. Well, remember. They didn't have any. They didn't have because, But they had uh, they had what they considered authority. Yeah. You yeah, ju just understand that everything Jesus was doing in terms of healing, he wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. It was the Father within him that was doing the work because our Savior had loyalty, fidelity, fellowship, and communion with Yahweh God. And as a result, 
Yahweh God was talking to Jesus about doing this, saying this, putting your hand on this one, mm -hmm. commanding demons to be removed. See, the Father was instructing him because Jesus was demonstrating, watch this, faith. Relationship with God. He was demonstrating it because the Father was telling him what to do. And as a result, the Father was backing Jesus up with anointing power that destroyed the yoke of infirmity and sickness. So you go down here, um, just read verse 5 again. As Jesus went into Capernaum, a centurion came up to him, begging him for help and saying, Lord, there it is. my servant is lying at home paralyzed with intense and terrible tormenting pain. This was serious. He didn't just have a toothache, which can be painful. Jesus said to him, the centurion, the centurion. I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied to him, Lord, I, I, the centurion, the, the Roman guard centurion, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. Listen to the authority. He recognizes Jesus' authority. He recognizes he doesn't have any. Not where this stuff is concerned. With the, the realm in which Jesus is walking in, this dude recognized, I'm not even worthy to have you come into my house. But if you say the word, it'll be done. Because I'm seeing, I know authority when I see it. I work for Rome. When they say come here, I come. When they say go there, I go. When they say beat him, I beat him. When they tell me to stop beating him, I stop. Does my feelings matter about what they telling me to do? No. I'm a man under authority. When I tell somebody to do it, I have some authority. When I say do so and so, they do it. So I know what authority looks like. I'm seeing in you that kind of authority. If you say the word, he'll be healed. We can learn something from that. Keep going. For I also am a Stop. man. Hmm? Read that third word. For I also. Yeah. So, the centurion understood authority. Mm -hmm. The centurion was under the authority of Rome. Mm -hmm. And the centurion had people underneath him. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Now, you mentioned before about uh, authority. Uh, how can we help the people understand this business of uh, what authority deals with? Authority is a simple word. It strictly means that you have the right to order that. Okay. We're parents. We have, we've had authority over our children. Now, they're grown people now. We don't have the same authority that we had when they were little. Why? Because they were totally dependent on us for their safety, for their food, for their clothing, for whatever needs they had, we were responsible for. Those days are over. All right, now, who gave us that authority? God. The Lord God gave us that God gave us as parents of young people. Exactly. All right. He says, parents, raise up your children in the way they should go. Which means, I have power to do so. Because yeah. he said, do it. So, the centurion, therefore, is demonstrating a principle of faith. Principle of faith. 
In other words, our Savior was under the authority of his Father God to administer healing by speaking a word. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the speaking of the word that demonstrated faith. It was the obedience from the Father to speak the word. So uh, our Lord Jesus Christ heard his Father say, be healed. And therefore, he said, he said that's what is being torn. Okay. So uh, go down here, verse, verse nine. 9. For I also am a man subject to authority of a higher rank. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those who were following him. Now, Jesus was not alone talking to this guy. If you thought that Jesus had gone off a little corner and just him and this other guy, you know, chit-chatting, huh? Remember those people that was following him off that mountain? They still following him. They still following him. Because they just seen a leper get healed, and they're like, what is he going to do next? What is, what's next with this dude? <laughs> he was amazed and said to those who were following him, I tell you truthfully, I have not found such great faith as this with anyone in Israel. Now, this is a slight smite against Israel. Because guess what this guy was not? He was, he was not of Israel. Yeah, he was a Roman centurion. He was a Gentile, a non-Jew, and a Roman on top of that. And so he is teaching. He is teaching them. What is he teaching them? That faith is not based on your nationality. Anybody can come Anybody. and uh, get involved Anybody. with uh, faith in God. Anyway. And what did the Roman centurion do? First, he acknowledged Jesus as Lord. Mm -hmm. And secondly, he recognized that Jesus was submitted to the God of the Israelites. Submitted. Submitted. In loyalty, fellowship, communion, and fidelity. Mm -hmm. To the point to where when Jesus said, be healed, it would happen. 